NVIDIA Broadcast, the latest and greatest software NVIDIA has released for streamers, which transformed your gaming space into a home studio. Hi, my name is Rach Darling, and today we're going to go and deep dive into the NVIDIA Broadcast, looking at its features, the quality, and ultimately setting it side by side with its hardware equivalent. Alongside the launch of the RTX 30 series GPUs, NVIDIA has brought out NVIDIA Broadcast, which is a brand new AI powered software which helps streamers up their quality game without having to splash out on new gear. This is the perfect tool for an up and coming streamer or someone who's looking to get into streaming for the first time. But what exactly does it feature? The broadcast app features are noise removal. This removes background noise from your microphone like traffic, dog barking and loud neighbors. It can even be used on incoming audio feeds. Virtual background. This removes the background of your webcam and replaces it with a soft blur, game footage, or even a custom image. Auto frame. This is a zoom feature that tracks your head movements via the AI to keep you center of frame at all times. Now that you know what the app offers, let's take a proper look at each feature. The noise removal feature essentially aims to replicate the suppression of background noise, but instead of manually setting a suppression in an audio mixer or a streaming software, this AI takes complete control and decides what is primary audio and what is secondary audio, muting the secondary audio from your input completely. Let's show you what I mean. So this is NVIDIA Broadcast. I'm going to select my microphone source as my main microphone and the effect as noise removal. Right now you're hearing my microphone with absolutely no filters, no noise gate, no suppressions, nothing. And we're going to go ahead and turn on the noise removal. So this is what my voice now sounds like with the uh, noise removal on. As you can tell, there isn't that much difference because there's not a lot of background noise going on right now. So let's give that a little bit of a test. I'm gonna rapidly start tapping my keyboard as if I'm gaming and we can see exactly how the noise removal helps to remove that unwanted sound. So I'm typing away right now. And apart from the occasional clicks, while I am talking, not really much on. So let's go ahead and turn that off and see the difference between on and off. It's picking everything up, including my Windows error noise. But what about background music? Maybe you are in an area where your neighbors are very loud and play very obnoxious music. So let's try that out. This is what it sounds like with my music on and playing through my speakers. And now this is what it sounds like when I have my noise removal on. So you can hear that there is a significant difference between noise removal being on and noise removal being off. You can pretty much hear the entirety of my playlist. It's actually really impressive how much unwanted noise it removes. This was the first thing I tried and tested when I downloaded the software and I was absolutely blown away by it. I can't believe how it manages to be able to track your voice and remove that unwanted background noise. Again, this is what it sounds like with the noise removal off. But what about something a little bit more unpredictable, like perhaps a dog barking? My dog, Bella, and my other dog, Bo, are so infamous for interrupting my stream by constantly barking. So let's try out the noise removal with those two barking in the background. So this is with noise removal off. And this is with noise removal on. So there you go. It does manage to capture and mute the majority of background noises. Now, when you have extremely loud background noise, it is going to create sort of a robotic effect over your voice. Now, a suppression or a compressor in streaming software like OBS Studio would aim to replicate the same thing. And I'm going to test it out side by side so that you can hear the difference between the noise removal on an NVIDIA broadcast and a compressor on filters. This is me just doing some casual fake gaming tippy taps with the broadcast software noise filter on. 
So this is with a compressor on via OBS Studio's filters. Now you wouldn't just have a compressor on its own, you would also couple it with a noise gate. Because um, what a noise gate does is that it keeps the microphone's audio closed until the audio hits a certain amount of decibel and then that's when it opens. So you would couple this uh, with a noise gate for sure. So now I'm gonna try it with my background music just to see how it fares. Yeah, I can still hear my music, can you? So, like I said before, you would couple it with a noise gate. So, the fact that the background audio is suppressed even a little bit means that you can couple it with a noise gate, and it should still have kind of the same effect as the noise removal. The good thing about NVIDIA Broadcast though is that you don't need to fiddle around with filters, you don't need to fiddle around with sliders, you just simply flick a button and there you have it. You have the noise removal that you need to remove background noise while you're streaming. Another cool feature about this NVIDIA Broadcast software is that you can actually replicate the same noise removal that you have on your own microphone with people who are in voice calls with you. So say for example, you're playing games with friends on Discord and you have that one friend that refuses to use push to talk and you can constantly hear every single tippy tap of his keyboard keys. Well, if you head to speakers and select your audio source as your chat channel, for me, it's simply just called chat. When you select the noise effect removal, you can flick this on and you're able to deafen the sound of people who are in voice chats with you. The virtual background features essentially aim to replicate the use of green screen. However, unlike most background removal out there, this doesn't require an unoccupied background meaning you don't have to remove anything from behind you. As long as you have good lighting, you should be good to go. The background blur aims to replicate a bokeh effect as if you're using a lens on an SLR with a high aperture. It creates a haze around you, tricking the eye into seeing field of depth whilst keeping them focused on you and simultaneously creating areas out of focus, like the background. While you move around the camera's frame, the software will readjust this haze around you and you also have the option to turn up the software strength. Having a bokeh effect on your camera is actually quite in fashion for streaming, so this is a very good alternative to splashing out hundreds of pounds on the equipment for relatively the same effect. The background replacement and the background removal feature uses the same technique as each other. It essentially replicates the use of a green screen as if you're chroma keying out a specific color. You have the option to change the background for any image you want, so you can pretend to be anywhere in the world that suits your theme or you can remove the background completely. Just like with a regular green screen, good lighting seems to be quite important for accurate background removal. So keep that in mind. Now I wanna show you a side-by-side -side comparison of using a green screen and using the software background removal. The autofocus feature is quite an interesting one to play around with. I've seen something similar replicated with hardware and panning the shot left to right, which is quite expensive and so it's exciting to see it become available in software form. Essentially, what it does is it zooms into your face and tracks your movements, so you're able to move around freely without going out of frame. Right now, the camera software is in beta and works best with physical devices. So if you're using a capture card, then you might not get the same performance as someone who's using a plug and play video device, like a webcam, for example. So there we have it. The NVIDIA broadcast software for streamers to turn their room into a home studio. And this doesn't have to be just for streamers. This is really useful for people who are working from home, people who voice or video conference, or just casual, regular gamers. It's compatible with Discord, Zoom, Skype, and all major streaming software. If this video helped, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more streaming videos like this, and to check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash ragedowling. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.